Hi everyone, um, many of you will be aware of the whole class feedback sheet where you know a stack of 30 books um, to reduce that marking burden which drives every teacher crazy in schools across the world. Um, I look through the 30 books and I annotate the sheet and then etymologically speaking the word assessment to sit beside I sit beside the children in my class and I provide them with the feedback I've written on this sheet. This sheet is for me, uh, not the students. Um, and, you know, think of all the different types of students that you have in class. Most classrooms have th at least three groups. Uh, the, the students, when you provide feedback, go off and fly. Uh, the students that need a little bit more script, a little bit more support, and then the students that will always struggle. Um, and then if we think of types of feedback, verbal, written, nonverbal, feed up, feedback, feed forward, there are many ways that we can work in our classroom. So we're all familiar with this resource. I'm going to take it a little bit further for you. Um, when we ask students, so number one here, we, our ultimate goal as teachers is to help children learn or to behave, you know, self-regulating, metacognition, being aware of what I know about volcanoes and what I don't know about volcanoes. Number one, right kids, in your books, draw this volcano. Could you label the, the sections of the volcano and then write a paragraph to describe how the volcano erupts and how the lava cools down. In this gray zone, so using research from Nicol and McFarland Dick, 2007, this is a model and seven principles of good feedback. Um, all this gray zone are what happens internally within the students that we don't necessarily see or observe in the lesson. You know, kids' cultural capital, their motivations, their strategies, their knowledge, their schema. I then set a goal based on what Mr. McGill's told me to do. I select tactics and strategies that I have or Mr. McGill gives me. And then I set my own goals based on what Mr. McGill's asked me to do. And this influences my cognition, uh, paying attention, my motivation, uh, my excitement levels, and my focus, my behavior, and how I interact. Six, I observe this. So in the lesson, in the moment, teachers are constantly evaluating uh, verbal, nonverbal cues, and many other things. And then seven, we use this data to reteach in the lesson, so that in class assessment or outside the lesson to reshape our curriculum plans. So that's um, looking a little bit of theory, but let's take this original resource, whole class feedback, a little bit further. Seven principles. Here's Nicola McFarland Dick. Now, some of you will be familiar with 17 principles of Barrett Rosenshine, published recently in just 10 to make it a bit more manageable. I would say these seven could be squeezed down to four. Um, so number one, here's a great example. Let's do it this way. I do, we do, you do. If you look at two, three, four, and five on the screen, I would argue that you could squeeze it into one. I, off you go, kids. Here's a question. Well done, Ross. Have you thought about A instead of B? This is pretty much me facilitating self-assessment, providing feedback, thumbs up, thumbs down, show me mini whiteboards, discuss with your partner, think, pair, share, write it down, all those retrieval practice methods and that kind of positive uh, feedback to encourage, to challenge and support. But where all teachers focus their time, energy and effort is on number six, interventions in and out of the lesson and then using all this data assessment to use it as a feedback loop for planning the next lesson or even in the moment, number seven. So it looks like, so I've done a plan. Uh, it looks like this. So you might want to use this as a way of scripting your feedback to the class, taking this original resource one step further, backed by this research. And number six, if you look at this area in particular, which pupils, what intervention, at what point of the intervention will be used, time, day, location, which adults, um, and what next, and how you'd evaluate that impact. Now, here's the resource I would like you to download and use. Um, it is get the right slide, this one. Now, most teachers always use the word feedback, but are we aware of feed up and feed forward? Now, there's a great blog, I'm just gonna put it on the screen by John Hattie, published quite recently uh, using his original work with uh, Helen Timperley in 2007 about the uh, power of feedback, uh, visible learning. Uh, he, he, he kind of references a lot of duplicate uh, research papers that may have influenced these original findings. So this new meta-analysis published this academic year in 2020 
looks at it a little bit further. So here's the definition. This is the blog, the power of feedback, if you want to read it. But the resource, using Hattie's findings and then coming up with this resource, whole class feedback sheet. Now, remember, there's two things you can use here. One, be a better understanding of feedback. Number two, using this sheet to annotate those 30 books that I then use as a script to sit beside students. So number one, here's what a good performance, uh, here's what a good one looks like. And then using it as feed up. Feed up is, this is the actual status of your work, Ross, compared to your target. That's feeding up to improve, to reach that target. Two, groups of students in your class, feedback. This is your actual status of your work, Ross. This is your drawing of your volcano compared to where you were before. And let me explicitly explain the things that you've done or maybe ask yourself. Feed forward, explaining the target status based on the actual status. So, you know, moderation exams, this is the grade C, this is the criteria, and this is why it's a grade four or a grade C or whatever you're using in your classroom assessment really critical that teachers we become a bit more aware of feed up feedback and feed forward and then you've got looking at missed opportunities misconceptions and then using this to influence your next lesson plan in your curriculum scheme so i hope this offers you something a little bit further to think about whole class feedback here is probably the original it's been well circulated online uh, looking at the research into metacognition and the principles of good feedback this is now my take on using it as a, a feedback plan for your own curriculum planning. Uh, but then looking at the template, so I'm getting my slides mixed up here. Uh, here it is here. Um, reshaping whole class feedback for those three groups of learners. Kids that fly, kids that need a little bit of script before they go off and do it. And then the kids that will always need a bit of support. And then also improving our own understanding of that feed up, feedback, feed forward mechanisms. And um, I hope it helps. Uh, and while we're at it, don't forget to check out the verbal feedback research I published in 2009 when it's structured and routine and we abandon some form of written feedback. Verb verbal feedback techniques have no detrimental impact on people's engagement or indeed their outcomes. And it might just save your working, uh, your marking burden and that workload issue that all teachers face. Anyway, thanks for watching and get in touch if you have any questions.